Good day. God bless. This is your virtual big brother, Ray Coyasso, and you're listening to Ray's talk show, uh, the talk show for people that are trying to get out of the cage of an unfulfilling career to find wealth in your voice through personal satisfaction. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, this is your virtual big brother, Ray Coyasso. We, we, uh, uh, we really appreciate uh, members of the race talk show community like Tatiana that just started uh, watching the show, uh, who check us out on the live lab platform. Normally we do the show Tuesdays and Thursday nights, but because of schedules and because this is a very special day for our our very special guest, uh, we wanted to do this show uh, this evening. Uh, thank you again so much for joining us, whether you're watching as a live talk show on our as a replay on the video or as a podcast. Again, you can check out race podcast on iTunes or anywhere like Stitcher, anywhere you can download a podcast. And for all of our content, whether it's video, live streaming, our scopes, uh, our other content, including the podcast and the live television uh, uh, video talk show, you can check out at bigbrotherray.com. That's bigbrotherray.com. And you know, if anything is clear as it relates to uh, what's happening in this rapidly evolving industry of ours, the co online content game is that this is the year of video and this is the year of live streaming. And I wanted to have a conversation about that with someone that I have a, so, so much respect for uh, building an incredible personal brand through live streaming, but someone that's doing it with God right by their side. And I think that's very appropriate to combine uh, the conversation around how you can build a platform and keep your soul and feed your soul and, and serve others. Uh, the man, you know, from the good morning, God bless. Morning Periscope, one of the hottest live streamers in the game, and the birthday boy himself, Tony R. Sanders. Welcome to Race Talk Show, Tony. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Honor to be here. Tony, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you now. Welcome to the show, Tony. Happy to be here, man. Super excited. Oh, it's great. And, um, we're going to find out. Uh, Tony, even on his birthday, is providing us special gifts. You're going to find out about a very special gift that Tony is providing us in a moment. want to uh, introduce Tony. You know, Tony has been an entrepreneur since he was 12 years old. And with the guidance of his grandparents, uh, who instilled in him the principles of business, sales, and marketing, Tony has not only become a successful entrepreneur in many ventures, but most recently has really dedicated uh, himself to building his own personal brand through the power of live streaming. And we're just so happy to have Tony R. Sanders on the show. Tony, before we start uh, learning more about your story, let people know where they can find you on social media and uh, make sure they know all of your handles and and, uh, work, and your social media platforms. Yeah, I'm at Tony R. Sanders on most social media platforms. All the ones that I'm on, I'm at Tony R. Sanders. The ones that I'm most active on would definitely be Periscope, Twitter and Snapchat right now, and then right after that will be Facebook and Instagram. So definitely check me out there at Tony R. Sanders. And I mean, there's new platforms popping up every day, so you never know where you might see me. That is the truth. And later in the show, we actually I am going to pick Tony's brain because there's live streaming platforms he just shared with me. There's live streaming platforms I just shared with him before we started taping. There's platforms that are kind of having their ups and downs. So we want to give people kind of the latest, and certainly pick Tony's brain on that. Tony, as I, I shared in the introduction, your um, your journey did not begin as uh, someone that hosts the hottest live streaming morning show on Periscope. Good morning. God bless. So Tony sure. R. Sanders, where did this journey begin for you? Uh, for me, it started with uh, actually selling a business. Uh, I wanted to start getting time back. I, I realized that even though I was successful in my previous business, the amount of time that I needed to put in on a weekly basis was just not conducive to uh, not only my family, but what I wanted to do long term. And so I wanted to start creating um, creating content for online platforms. It initially started with developing a YouTube show, uh, that YouTube show, which never actually came out, <laughs> uh, came into a live streaming show. And I, and, I, and I knew that from previous experiences that I, I'm energized based off of the people that are around me and, and that real human to human interaction and so when when periscope came out and meerkat and some of these other live streaming platforms blab i knew that that would be a place that i could jump in interact with some people start building up a community and really thrive off that energy and, and kind of give my content that way so uh it was it was really cool i found periscope i knew it would be a great way to display some of the things that maybe wouldn't show up on my resume but i knew that i had the skill set to do 
And so, uh, yeah, I just kind of found Periscope Man and watched it for a couple of days. And then I just do I dove right in and, you know, it's been literally nonstop ever since. <laughs> I hear you. How long have you been uh, on uh, doing your regular show on Periscope? So today we did episode 220, so 220 days in a row. Uh, we've been doing Good Morning and God Bless. So, yeah, it's literally been nonstop. <laughs> that is incredible. That is awesome. Yeah, no, we've done uh, 200 and uh, well over 230 episodes of Race Podcast, the podcast version of it, and on, on Blab, probably about 30 video versions yeah. of that show. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's like uh, Chris Rock says, you're, as for a stand-up comedian, you're going to be bad at it for a couple of years. You might as well start now, right? So, Tony, I'm, I'm curious you bring up something that uh, absolutely we have Art and Tatiana on the side. And uh, in a moment, I'll I'll certainly invite those folks to join this conversation. And uh, always great to hear from them on the chat and questions. So they can always interact with the show, no doubt about that. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask you, Tony, was that you brought up something very interesting that, you know, I, I, I tell people that uh, many people that we work with here in the race talk show community, really the, the, it's what you just said it's like they feel they have much more to give than what the resume would allude to oh i got it's frozen on my uh, the foresight to just start and, and start expressing yourself and what did you learn in that process uh, so a little bit of the question kind of cut out. It was frozen a little bit, but I think I, I think I got what you said. Basically, you're asking me about um, just just starting to be able to show some of those things that wouldn't show up on my resume. Is that what the question was? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So yeah, for for me, it was just uh, the same thing. Excited me. It scares a lot of people. So what what was exciting for me is I knew I could jump right in front of the people and prove what I could do instead of just having a piece of paper that says I could do it. Right. And that's I knew from being an entrepreneur, being in business and a business owner that I didn't necessarily care what your what your resume said. That was a good indicator, but I, I just wanted results. I wanted to know if you can get it done. And so I knew that, you know, I may not have this uh, technical certificate from this school saying that I know about social media or saying that I know about social media marketing or maybe even sales, but I knew that I knew these things because I, you know, recently educated myself and I used them for my own business practices. So I knew that if I can get in front of a lot of people and essentially just show them um, the results and bring them results, then I knew that that would work and I could start to build a brand that way and eventually build a business on top of that brand. And so that's what it came from. It came from knowing that we live in a results driven world, a bottom line driven world. And if you can get the results, it, it doesn't matter what your resume says. It really does. You're right about that. And, and Tony, on that piece, I'm curious. What in, in, in this, uh, I didn't realize it, it, you being, it says Periscope is really basically a year old, one of the more prolific Periscopers out there, certainly with your morning content, that what what is producing that content, how is producing the content helped you find your voice and hone your brand? Because one of the things that I share with people is that you have to produce content, even if you're not clear on what your brand is, because that's ultimately mm -hmm. how you, through feedback, through practice through through that's how you're going to really kind of determine it that's producing the content's going to lead you in that direction so how how has this journey helped you hone your voice and and refine and maybe and possibly refine your brand yeah the first thing was getting over the fear right so what if i do a show and it fails uh the good thing about a show failing is if it fails that means no one watches it so no one knew you failed no, no, no one caught it, right? No one watched it. No one knows it failed. So it, it kind of takes the fear away. Uh, but you know, it's it's also like uh, you know Saturday Night Live. Every Saturday, you know, the show's going live. Whether it's the the greatest show they've ever done or the worst show they've ever done, it's going live. And another one's going to come on next Saturday. And so for me, it was getting over that fear that I'm that I may do something wrong. I may you know screw something up, and just accepting that. I am going to start out bad and there's no, there's nothing wrong with starting bad, but staying bad. That, that's the issue. Right. So if you, if you never show progress, if you're not getting better from episode to episode, then that was the issue. And so once I kind of got that in my head and I was, I was forced to create content every day, I started to be able to find my voice a little bit more. Um, before I started uh, Periscope, I took a, ch a challenge from uh, Seth Golden, one of the greatest marketers, 
uh, you know, of our time. But he, he had a challenge to write a blog post every day for uh, for a year. Uh, it was a huge, huge challenge. He said it on a radio interview, and I was like, yeah, I'm doing that. And it didn't matter if you published it or not. You just had to write something every day for a year. So it's essentially journaling. But if you have one good enough to publish, go ahead and publish. So I did that, and I published three of them per week. And that really helped me come up with different ideas and really challenging challenging myself on how I thought about certain things. And, you know, if I really felt strongly about these subjects as, you know, I, I initially thought I would. So as more so as a content creation journey, it was also kind of a, a soul searching journey, a reflection journey, finding more out about myself, knowing that I had to I had to ship something every day. I had to, I had to put out some content every single day. And so I think that kind of prepared me. That was the year before I found Periscope. So then when I found Periscope, um, you know, it wasn't that difficult to do a morning show every day because, you know, the year before I, I produced content every single day. No, and, and that's a great transition talking about sort of this experience. And I agree with you, Tony. That's one of the reasons I want to have you on the show, because I think our, our personal philosophies are really in line because I share with people that this, the journey of race podcast and building my own personal brand is, is a spiritual journey. I didn't, I, uh, you know, uh, and people have often heard on the show, I have a, I have a great life and I, I'm incredibly grateful for family, career help. And, you know, I didn't, I barely slept for two years, Tony, because uh, I think at the end of the day, I've determined that it wasn't, I didn't know what I should be doing is I wasn't listening to my heart and right. I started podcasting and producing content, not knowing what I was doing, dabbling with some different formats and, and uh, different genres and trying different things. But ultimately it took me a while to figure out why I was going in this direction, but if I didn't start, I wouldn't have known. And so it's so right. important for us to to understand that these um, these projects or these this content they're creating really has much higher purpose uh, and uh, than just you know even even well beyond building a brand. I shared it with you before we started recording that uh, you know I, I felt like the John the Baptist for Hispanics and in podcasting because I I didn't until a year ago I was podcasting two years before I met another one that ever did a podcast and uh and right. you know and there was so many wonderful people I'm associated with many of which have done journalism or media that just the idea of podcasting just seemed like a foreign concept and all of a sudden now right. I have friends podcasting and I have people coming to me all over the place and I shared with you I was just at Hispanicize um talking about the power of podcasting a lot of people so it's it's you know it's one day like People just, it's the aha moment, right? And But it wouldn't have happened uh, if I didn't start and, and kind of follow follow the path I was that was in my heart to do. So uh, so on that, Tony, I'm curious, and I appreciate some of the new friends of our cu mutual communities like Durham Scott and Anne Marie Sampson that have joined the show. And feel free to send, uh, put questions or comments in the chat. It's great to have you all with us today on Race Talk Show. But Tony, I'm curious, what led to the... Uh, your show being branded Good Morning, God Bless, and having it in the morning. What led to the way you've uh, you've crafted your, your Periscope show, Good Morning, God Bless? Okay, so I would love to tell you that there was like this magical, mo you know, marketing genius moment where I was sitting and brainstorming and it all came down and I planned it out. And I knew 220 days ago that I'd be right here, you know, with this show and doing this podcast, but that's just not true. The truth is, <laughs> I was getting my old change in my car, and uh, I, I walk across the street to get some coffee on the Starbucks, and I'm, I'm thinking uh, kind of what you were just saying. I just have to start. Regardless of what I do on Periscope, I just have to start. I'm new to the platform. I'm not really sure how it is. I've never gone live before. All I need to do is just start it. Once I start, I can figure out it. I can figure it out as long as, you know, on the way and, and you know, kind of uh, fine-tune it as we go. And so... I thought about something simple, and I encourage new people, if you're new to Periscope or live stream, to do this now. I could just get on here and say, good morning and God bless to as many people as show up. If, if they show up, you know, I'll say good morning and God bless to them. So it doesn't matter if it's one person or two people or three people or 100 people. I'll just say it, and then when people stop showing up, I'll stop broadcasting. And so it took the pressure off of being able to have, like, great, solid content. It took the pressure off of, you know, making sure that the content was – uh, you know, put together the right way for this platform uh, because it's not YouTube. It's not, you know, a blog post. It's completely different. So that took the pressure off. And so I did it the first day and I got a really great response from it. And, and I liked it, right? I was thinking that I can go on here and I could, 
brighten up some people's day, you know, maybe we make some people laugh, make some people smile, uh, make some people think maybe, but it really made me have a better day. And so it's like, oh, that was kind of cool. I'll do it again. And the next thing you know, I did it 10 days in a row. And I was like, you know what? The marketing size kicked in. It's like, I should, I should start numbering these episodes, right? I should start doing Good Morning and God Bless episode, you know, 10, 11, 12, to one, let people know that there's consistency there because people love consistency, right? Even if they don't watch you every day, they want to know that whenever they come back, you'll still be there. So they love that consistency and they love to see your journey. And so as that number climbs, your following is going to climb just based on the number. Wow, you've been doing this for 100 days. I got to check this out. Whatever this is, I need to check this out. Right. And then once you once you get them to come in, um, then, you know, that's when the sales side kick in. You got to close the door and retain the customer. So, you know, that's 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 how it started. It was it was it wasn't a you know genius idea. It was just kind of something to do to get me started. And I wanted to start on a positive, a positive note. And uh, it was a really, really great response. I had fun with it. People had fun with it. I started noticing that the same people would come back every day. Uh, so I was like, okay, this is this is kind of cool. You know, I, I, I you know I get to learn more about them. I don't know their usernames anymore. I call them by their first names, and I don't know what cities they live in, and you know, start build real relationships with people. So um, yeah, that's how I get started, man. It was a really really cool, uh, really really cool start. That's great. And uh, Art Jones, a great friend here on Blab, has a question on the side. We're gonna get to it in the second art because we definitely want to talk about how Tony uh, not only how Tony's utilizing Periscope and other live streaming platforms or kind of where he sees them going there's you know it's like the it's like almost every day right tony we've got kind of like the the, the stock market for live streaming some are on the uptick some are waffling right. and, and we definitely should right. chat about that i'm sure people watching are sure. curious about your thoughts on that but tony i wanted to ask you first before we get to that question what what has been the biggest uh, what what kind what has been the biggest surprise or what is what has been most notable to you as it relates to the feedback you've gotten from your Periscope community? Um, there's been a lot of, uh, like, I guess, un unintended consequences, right? So I'm thinking that if I do this movement, then, uh, you know, maybe if I can reach 100 people, maybe one person takes this with them and it has a positive effect in their life and they decide to carry it on with someone else. And I did Good Morning and God Bless for 97 days before anybody reported back to me that it actually registered and resonated with them enough to where they wanted to do it, right? And so a guy named uh, Bill Hopkins, he goes by Bill Bodacious. He's a fifth grade science teacher in Birmingham, Alabama. And he comes on my scope day 98 and he's like, hey, I just want to let you know that every morning me and three other teachers tell 100 kids a piece, good morning, and we call them by their first name and we tell them God bless if we can. That 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 had a huge impact on me. I never knew that someone would, you know, even though that's what I wanted, I never knew someone would take it off of, you know, Periscope and now they're giving it to these little kids who are now having a better day and they're looking forward to it every day. And then it went from that to, you know, someone doing a good morning and God bless broadcast from the Philippines and someone did one in Switzerland. We have one that goes out every day from uh, London in the UK from, uh, Janine Cummins does it. And then Lisa Dawkins started doing one every day from Canada. And so it just kind of had this, you know, this mushroom effect where it's literally a global movement where people are telling people in all corners of the earth right now, good morning and God bless. And uh, you could definitely see the impact. You know, I was in Vegas uh, three weeks ago and we had a, our first live good morning and God bless. And we kind of went around the room. There was about 15 people there. And by the time everyone got done talking about uh, how the message of good morning and God bless, you know, really a simple statement, just something positive in the morning, how it had an impact on their lives. No one, myself included, left that room, the little coffee shop with a dry. Eye. Everybody was mm. crying and in tears and hugging each other just to talk about what that meant to them. And that was just, it was, that really, that really, you know, made me think about this, you know, and, and kind of uh, appreciate you know what this has become way way bigger than than me and way bigger than what i even intended and what i hoped for so um all those things have been huge use of prices to me yeah no it's amazing these things can go in so many directions i uh i've shared a few times on the show that in november uh my birthday's in november and uh you know people are very generous you know our our, our network in terms of giving you happy birthday shouts on facebook and it's one of the 
quite honestly, it's one of the highlights of my birthday, getting the, you know, getting those nice words from our friends. And there was two or three yeah. people that shared what I meant to them. And it was really interesting because they referenced stuff that, you know, favors or mentorship or advice or hookup or something that I did for them years ago. And quite honestly, didn't take much for me to do. And and at the time, it wasn't that significant for me. It was just at the time something nice to do for somebody, and um, right. And it, it they it resonated with them, and they and they and it really proved to me again that leadership matters. And even when we don't know the impact of what things are going to do to impact other people in the future, we've got a you know leadership. And on the of course the negative side, you know we we have politicians in this modern day who just think it's funny to say certain things. When real people are getting hurt by that, and we're seeing hate crimes and animosity, I don't know if you've seen this. This young, I believe he's an African immigrant. I don't know his name, but uh, this young man that goes around to all the political rallies and he hugs everybody, free hugs, and he's, you know, he goes to the rallies where everybody's angry and the leadership is angry, and everyone treats him. You know, a lot of people treat him bad. And there's all this racial stuff. And there's all this, he just, he's not even saying I'm for against anybody. I'm, I'm just offering free hugs. And then he goes to other yeah. rallies where people have a positive message, and everyone loves them. They hug them. They jump on them. Everyone's hugging each other. So there's, so there's, uh, you know, this. It means something, and we 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 just have no right. idea the impact we have on others and what impact we could have on the world if if we just put ourselves in a position to have these kind of to utilize these platforms the way we should. Um, uh, I believe it's uh, Miss Simpson uh, chimes in. You never know how much you're impacting somebody's life. With the simple things, there's no doubt about it, and and your uh, your fans are amazed by that story, Tony. There's a lot of wows and amazing comments here on the side, Tony. Uh, I want to before we get into picking your brain about kind of the best practices as you see on live streaming and hear a little bit more about uh, your your uh, your strategy on live streaming and also the birthday gift you provided us today, which I want to share with people. Want again thank people for watching Race Talk Show. We've got Cindy Ranhell, one of our one of our friends, holding you down for the shy as well as um, many of our friends uh, uh, and, and a few first-timers to Race Talk Show. So thank you so much for joining us live. And again, you can catch all of the, the video versions of Race Talk Show as well as the podcast at bigbrotherray.com. And of course, with our podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes. And I know Tony's a fan of Stitcher uh, on the Android side and uh, Google Play. And anywhere you can download a podcast, just download racepodcast.com. Tony, um, uh, before we get into questions, remind people again, uh, about your uh, social media handles, and then we'll we'll dive into picking your brain about live streaming do's and don'ts. Yeah, catch me at at Tony R. Sanders uh, every day on Periscope, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Good morning and God bless. Also, check me out on Snapchat at Tony R. Sanders. And whatever your social media platform choice is, I'm probably there. So check me out at Tony R. Sanders. There you go. So Art Jones, a, a great friend of podcasting, Definitely one of the most thoughtful, philosophical people on Blab. Uh, I, I admire that man's intellect so much, uh, and, he, and he's very generous with his comp, uh, with his time on, on Blab for all of us here in the community. Uh, are you exclusive, uh, Tony, on Periscope, or, or are you also on Facebook Live or YouTube? And I'd like you to answer that question, but also give yeah. me, give us in the community sort of your 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 thumbnail sketch of the live streaming landscape because it is fast moving. And it's almost hard to keep up. So answer the question and give us your 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 perspective uh, from one being one of the top live streamers in the game of where we're at here with the live streaming uh, landscape. So I love this question. I get asked this question a lot, and I love it because um, there's no there's no right or wrong answer. That's why I love this question. So I personally am not exclusive on Periscope. Um, I've done some blabs. I've, I've been on Me, I've been on Spreecast. I've been on uh, you know, YouTube, I've, I've been on Facebook Live. I still do Facebook Live. I did one uh, yesterday. Um, so I am not exclusive on Periscope. Um, I've done a couple of different live streaming apps. But the, the reason why is, and the reason why I like this question is because it, it all depends on what your goal is with your brand. And so there may be certain platforms on live streaming that play well or better with your brand. Um, but for me, my, my brand is to, at this point, build brand awareness. And so I kind of almost want to be omnipresent, right? My, my friends joke about now that I'm on uh, every social media, you know, known to man, every social media platform known to man from 
the one that's for 13 year olds to the one that's for you know 50 year olds or whatever. But my goal right now is to show up in, in as many places as possible, especially the places where uh, my my core demographic, you know, those people hang out. Especially when I'm talking to businesses about building brands on social media platforms as well, it's very important for me to be very knowledgeable in all the streaming platforms and really any social media platform. Um, but yeah, it just really depends on what your goal is. Um, I would definitely say right now, as far as getting the biggest reach, Facebook is probably the best place for you to be. I mean, they they got they got a billion and a half hanging out just waiting to, waiting to talk to you, right? And uh, it's really really cool where you can set up your show on Facebook and and do a Facebook live video from your business page and. and Treat it like a YouTube show, right? No shows up, doesn't matter. Treat it like a YouTube show. Give your content, and then when you're done with your content, flip that into a boost ad and use that to build your email list or use that to get more likes on your Facebook page or use that to, to build up your Facebook group, right? And now you can go live inside of groups. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, I have a course that I did on Snapchat, which I'm actually doing now, inside of a Facebook group. And so I have a, a private group. It's invite only. Now I can go live and essentially do my own webinar only to those group members mm. and give them the content that they paid for. And so what Facebook is doing right now, I mean, if you're looking to get out to as many people as possible, um, Facebook is and, and definitely, you know, monetize your replays as much as possible. Facebook is probably the best platform for it. Um, it's still hard on it's still still hard on visibility. I've seen the Facebook map. Uh, they do have a Facebook Live map. It's not available on mobile devices. Mm. Uh, last I checked, it's only available for uh, the, the desktops and laptops. Um, but once that comes to the mobile devices, I mean, that's going to that's gonna really throw some challenges at Periscope. Um, that's one advantage right now that Periscope has is with you go live and you have your location on, you get that discoverability on the map. You also get a boatload of trolls uh, <laughs> and people, they have... They have precise location as well, so people know exactly where you are. Yeah. Where with Facebook on the map, they have a, a general location, which is a lot better. So they may know that you're in Indianapolis, Indiana, but they may not know that you're on West 86th Street in Indianapolis, Indiana. That's a huge difference. Yeah. You know, Tony, you we're, we'll get to the Periscope piece in a second because I'm uh, I definitely want to dive a little bit more where you see Periscope in the landscape. But you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, at the end of the day, even though it's 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 still got its kinks uh that it's got to work out but you know facebook is just such a dominant player and if they're doing live streaming i think periscope and twitter sort of push them further along the road to get to it quicker than maybe they were expecting uh you know you you just cannot deny the potential the power of facebook live uh you know to reach uh you know it just gives you and i think you know and this will wear off i'm sure in the coming months but i still think because of how they rolled it out with sort of celebrities having it first i remember when i first I literally just noticed that I had it on my phone as kind of that first wave of sort of, you know, as regular people having it. I just remember it, there's still a novelty. Like I still people think uh, my friends associated with celebrity because the first people that had it were like, you know, celebrity. So it's like, wow, you have Facebook yeah. live or you're doing Facebook live. So I, I definitely think that it's, it, it still has a wow factor for people in the Facebook community that even a lot of them maybe weren't Twitter people or Periscope people. So it's, it's new for a lot of people. The whole concept is still new to a lot of people. Whole audience. It's a whole new audience. And here's the thing about Facebook. They perfected their app years ago. That's right. Like the core basic backbone structure of their app, their platform, it's done. So all they're doing right now is trying to figure out whatever they could do to make sure that whatever you need, you can do it inside of Facebook. They're creating their own ecosystem, right? So they had their biggest challenger was YouTube. And they came up with Facebook video. And they do the videos now where they just continue to roll. So you can binge watch Facebook videos. And they serve them up to you based on what you like. And then now they're jumping into live streaming and then, you know, virtual reality is coming after that and whatever you need, right? They have, they, they, before they did all of that, they had their own browser. So whatever you need, they want to make sure that you don't leave that Facebook app. They have their own ecosystem where you don't leave that app where, you know, everything that you need is right there. Right. I'm sure they're going to eventually, uh, they're, they're making changes to the messenger now, right? And even doing it where you can do cash transactions, similar to Snapchat, right? They're, they're also going to update it to where, uh, you know, you can have access to your emails, I'm sure, on Facebook. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that coming down the pipe. But all they want now is your time. They, they've already perfected their app. They're done. They just want your time and whatever 
whatever you're going to be interested in next, they're going to be a big player in that because they have all the information about you and they have they have your attention. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, Facebook is a, a major player in, in anything that they decide to get into. At this point. Absolutely, and you know, one of the things that I first speculated on people like Joe Polizzi's show and other content uh, thinkers is that you know mm -hmm. we often say that uh, the internet is going to replace cable tv maybe it's facebook maybe you see yeah. content channels just you know. streaming through facebook you know they've got a bigger sure. they've got a they've got a bigger platform than dish tv or any of those kind of platforms for sure. uh, art um, art uh, jones has another question here being a live streamer and using platforms where there are multitudes like facebook do you see a role for email marketing today and in the future for live streamers tony Yes, but it's it's gonna it's gonna get worse for us. Our, <laughs> it's just gonna get worse for us in email marketing. I mean, right now we're all we're all struggling with open rates, right? We're all struggling with having this big email list, and then we're getting twenty twenty five percent open rates, and then the conversion just goes down from there. And you know, it's uh, email is the thing that hasn't changed that much. It just hasn't. Um, you know, you can do little things now with the with the subject, and you can add emojis in now, and that's kind of cool. And you can maybe grab some more, some more, a few more heads that way, but not much. So, yeah. um, you know, everything is changing so fast, and email is practically the same as what it was um, as far as the the subjects and the headers and getting people into it. Then, you know, five or five or six years ago, and so. Um, I don't, I don't know what the big play is for email marketing. I, I think that it still works. It's, it's still extremely effective. Um, I sold out my course via email, right? So it's, it's still extremely effective, uh, but it, it's still a lot of hard work. And I, and I do think that it's going to get worse from here. Um, but the cool thing is all the platforms that we play on um, are, are building in their own uh, POS systems, their own point of sale systems, right? So if you can purchase my course right from Facebook without ever having to leave, I think eventually, long term, that may be a better option than getting you from Facebook into my email list and then from my email list through my sales funnel to 10 emails later while I'm actually asking for the payment. Um, and so that has its pros and cons to it as well, right? You know, the last thing you need Facebook to be is MySpace, where you have this big following on MySpace. And then MySpace is gone, and then you don't have your follow. You can't get in touch with your followers anymore, right? Or you know, Facebook turns into Friendster. I don't see that happening, but you know, I didn't see it happening with MySpace or Friendster either. And now they're gone, and everybody that built up their their following on there didn't have an email list. They lost. So, you know. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely a possibility in art. I think I think on the email is dead question. I think Tony basically answered it. It's it's still in the mix, still an effective tool, but it's not a dynamic. Uh, it's not a dynamic tool. So that's that's one of the things that's going to continue to sort of uh, you know kind of keep email in question, but it's certainly certainly a tool we need to utilize. You know, it's interesting, Tony. You build your your live streaming reputation primarily on Periscope, and uh, curious where you think Periscope's at. There's lots of debate about now with Facebook's prominence and uh, yeah. you know kind of where where that leaves Periscope in the mix. Um, uh oh, he's getting nervous. I, I, think that, I think that I think that Periscope could still win. I think it can, can not not necessarily win, but I think it can still be a strong competitor, right? And so uh, the the only thing that scares me about Periscope is Twitter. And so Twitter has a long history of being slow uh, and fixing things that we didn't ask to be fixed. It's 2016, and I can't edit a tweet. That's ridiculous. If I send you a tweet right now and I mess it up, I can't go back and edit it. I have to delete it and start over. That's ridiculous, right? But they come out with all these other things that, you know, and, and, it, and it almost seems like they don't know how to ident properly identify themselves, hmm. right? So when they came out and it's, it's a microblogging platform and then they start floating these rumors out there. We're going to give you 10,000 characters. It's like, why? We, don't, we already have one of those. It's called Facebook. We don't need you to do that. Like, stay Twitter. If you're going to be Twitter, stay Twitter. And so I'm I'm worried that since Twitter is you know in charge of Periscope is Periscope is owned by Twitter that they may pick up some of those same characteristics. I'm hoping that it doesn't happen that way. I'm hoping that they can be faster. But even if you look at what we've seen over the last um, you know three months or so, they they've made some improvements. We got we got the GoPro, we got the Twitter timeline integration. 
we got those things, but you know, I still can't start a stream without having my rear facing camera on. I can't do the front facing camera. Like, come on, man. We've been asking for that since a month after the thing came out. Like that's something that's definitely doable that we could do. And so um, that's what scares me about Periscope long term is that it's owned by Twitter and Twitter has, is historically wrong and inaccurate. Uh, so you know, Twitter's done some things lately that I really, really like. Um, I, I like what they're doing with the timeline, even though it's not that popular. I like what they're trying to do with Twitter moments. Um, but, you know, they, they've just historically they've been slow and inaccurate. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, for those, uh, and I want to thank everyone that's, that's watching on Race, uh, Race Talk Show Live, including my compadre, Elba Garcia, who's joined us from the MIA, Tatiana, another one of our South Florida members of our community is in the building. The, uh, and I, and the, we're not going to get to it, but I was in Miami recently, and lots going on at, at Hispanic size we have to share on a, on a post-game show at some point soon. Uh, Tony, um, for those listening to this uh, that either are already on Periscope or – are thinking about, you know, sort of creating a presence there. Give people a tip. You have so much to share on. You're the Periscope King, bro. So give people a tip on on, uh, on uh, sort of a best practice you'd like to share with your community here about uh, de- uh, developing your voice on Periscope. Cool. So first thing I want to tell you is with Periscope, when you're live, you are live. So regardless of if there are zero people in your broadcast when you go live or if there's one, two, three, or, or 3,000, right, when you're live, you're live. So make sure that as soon as you hit start broadcast, you're ready to start broadcast. And again, they haven't fixed the camera. So whatever the whatever the back of your phone is facing, you know, whatever direction it is, that's exactly what is in the show. Um, also, make sure that from even before you start streaming, make sure that you're conscious of the content that you're sharing. Right. And so I always use the phrase uh, become Google. Right. Be Google. So Google doesn't own any content. But all the content that it has, it's, it's serving it up to you based on your request. And so if I'm a sales guy and you follow me for sales tips and my cousin is showing, you know, cute, you know, cat tricks, I may not want to share that out to my entire community because they didn't follow me for cute cat tricks. They followed me for sales. And so make sure that you're curating the right content when you're sharing it out for your community to make sure that you're not going to annoy them or they're going to turn your notifications off. Right. Also, go, come in with a plan. Uh, a lot of people just, you know, scope because they want to scope, and that's fine. Uh, but a lot of times you need to be able to come in with a plan and at least have a direction of the type of content that you're going to go because people want to see value. And people, I think a lot of times we take other people's time for granted, right? So I'm going to do, you know, a, an hour podcast, but I'm not I'm 30 minutes of it. I'm just going to kind of jack around. That's not being very respectful of people's time. So if you're going to go live on Periscope, have something to say or have something to do or a way that you're trying to add value. And it doesn't have to be this huge monumental thing, right? Sometimes I go to Good Morning and God Bless, and my entire goal is to make you laugh. And so I may say the silliest thing. I may tell a silly story or whatever, but all I want to do is make you laugh that morning. All I want to do is make you smile. Then I may come back the next morning. I may hit you heavy with some, you know, thought-provoking stuff, or I may come back in the next day and just let me give you these three business tips that are going to change your life and do it that way. But each time I'm going to make sure that someone gets something out of it. So those are, those would be my tips. I mean, just be careful what you're sharing when you're live, you're live and come with a plan, respect people's time. You know, that's right. Yeah. There, there are ways to options out here for us to not respect people's time. That's right. And you're going to, you're going to do the, you have to balance the, the diversity of the kind of topics you discuss or the styles you discuss. Sure. Cause sometimes you're, you know, so sort of traveling, it's a little more personal and sometimes it's more straight sort of advice on on content creation and sort of what trends in the industry but there's there's a theme to it it is part of a brand that you've been developing so i think that's excellent tony the uh uh the on that piece uh any thoughts on sort of the rest of the field you know after besides facebook live and periscope i mean there's there's a few you mentioned before we started taping i'm not even i wasn't even aware of i shared with you uh you now which is another live stream platform i just learned about recently there's me that you and I both have partaken in and many others. So just a word yeah. on the rest, the uh, the rest of the players out there that's notable for our audience. They have to be ready to fight. I mean, they're, and business is a business is not a, you know, a, a little knickknack game. It's a war, <laughs> you know? So when you come to, when you come to play, you gotta be ready to play. 
And, uh, you know, you take platforms like Mebi, who from a, a people standpoint are doing all the right things, right? They're digging in with the community. They're, they're going yeah. to meetups and, you know, getting with broadcasters like you and I, and they're, they're making sure that we're taking care of it. Let's start feedback. But but then they're slow, right? You gotta, I mean, you gotta you gotta pump them out. I mean, you gotta find a way to stay relevant. Again, you know, there there are too many options for you not to value people's time and kind of be stagnant. And so I think that there's room for uh, many other live streaming platforms to kind of get a piece of the pie, right? Just like if you look at how the the TV industry was formed, you know, at first it was only you know, uh, CBS and then ABC got a piece and then NBC got a piece and then, you know, so on and so forth. And then you and then you get the, the you know, CW fours and twenty nine, you know, you get those off those one off channels. And then, you know, you, you, you have but you still have, you know, Turner, who's, you know, who's Facebook, who has like owns everything like a universal. Right. So I think there's still room for other uh, you know, live streaming platforms to get a piece of the pie, but the longer their wait, the smaller that piece is. And Tony, how would uh, what would you recommend you, uh, content creators approach to engaging those platforms or not? I mean, what you know, I mean, so one could argue if you got Facebook, you got Periscope, that's yeah. you know, pick pretty j- j- chunk of the game. How would how how should people value investing their time in some of these other platforms? Yeah, so. I think one thing that you have to do is make sure that you secure your username on every platform because that's the, you know, that's a branding piece of real estate that you must have. But as far as developing content for platforms, you have to do it based on where your people are consuming content the most. Right. And so one thing that I'm personally uh, battling with right now is that I'm not a huge Instagram fan. Right. I, I love I love Instagram. I'm not a, a huge user of Instagram. Right. And it's kind of like having your own magazine or having your own newspaper where you have, you know, your, your image and then your, your print underneath it. And so, but what I'm finding out is next to Periscope and Facebook and slowly Snapchat is coming. That's where most of my people are spending their time at my core audience. They love Instagram. Oh yeah. They love to see dope visuals and they love to, you know, they love to follow Steve Harvey on there and Ipsy. Like every, it seems like everybody in my audience likes Ipsy and Steve yeah, Harvey. Yeah, no, I mean it, it, it over index it, it highly indexes with, with women of color that you know are the kind of Ooh. people that enjoy our content the most. So you're absolutely right. I've had so, to re-engage with Instagram because that, that's where our folks are at, you know. You gotta do it. And so I, I prioritize it that way, right? Where can I get the most movement at? Where are my people at? How can I get things in front of them? Right. It's just like if you were your content creation was a billboard and you wanted to put your billboard in you know, the best part of town, right? You want to put it in the best part of town on the busiest street where there's the most foot traffic. It's the same way when you're creating content online and for these platforms, you want to put it on the best platform with the most foot traffic for the people that you're looking to attract. And so that's how I divide mine up. And so you'll see a lot more on Periscope than you will see on uh, Instagram right now. And you'll see a little bit more on Facebook and then you'll see some on Snapchat as well. And so um, it, it's really up to you to be able to do your own research, but and again, going back to kind of the 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 uh, head of this whole thing, Facebook is the best place for you to research your audience and see That's right. who you have. I can look at your Facebook profile and tell what type of movies you like and what what genre of music you like the most, and you know where you went to school and where you work now, and you know how far you live away from you. You know, it's just so much information there, which makes you know Power Editor and Facebook ads so useful because. I mean, they got the drop on everybody. <laughs> they have they have more information about most people than your best friend has on you, you know. So, uh, but yeah, you do it based on where your people are. Absolutely. And again, we're talking here on Race Talk Show with Tony R. Sanders, uh, the man behind the hottest morning live streaming uh, uh, show in the game. Good morning, God bless, which you can catch on Periscope and other live stream platforms. And what's the hashtag uh, for your morning show, Tony? Hashtag GMGB. It stands for Good Morning and God Bless. Absolutely. Love the love the title, love the spirit. And we're going to talk a little bit about that title in a second. But, Tony, uh, I wanted to ask, you know, it is your birthday. If you're watching this live, happy birthday to you, my brother. It's, it's, uh, as one of your friends said, you're, you, you're not 29. You're completing your 29th year, which I, I don't even get either, but... That's that's another conversation. That's for a you for you. Yeah. I never get that one, but that's okay. But you're still a young man, Tony. You got a lot to a lot more to share with us, no doubt about it. And right. um, I wanted to give you the opportunity to announce 
not only uh, something that's going to bring a lot of joy to our community, but your gift to us on your birthday. How appropriate, Tony, that you announced this today. Yeah, so I, I love to I love to give back, and especially on my birthday, that's one of the things that I love to do is just uh, uh, give back. And, and really, <laughs> the the real thing is I love to do what people don't expect me to do, and so this is kind of like double time. No one expects you to give them a gift from their birthday, and no one expected me to do a podcast, which is what I did as a gift uh, for my birthday. So I have a podcast. Uh, it's the hashtag awesome. two S A S uh, stands for to sell a salesman. And it's essentially a collection of stories that highlight the principles of solution-based salesman, uh, salesmanship. And it talks about really the right way to sell, the way that you know we like someone to sell to our grandmother, and the way that we like to be uh, sold things. And so it's available right now on iTunes. You can definitely download it, rate, review, let me know uh, what you think about it. And it's also available for Stitcher. So if you have uh, the Stitcher app for iOS or Android, you can download it there. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. It's 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 unlike any podcast that you've heard. I, I will definitely say that it's very real. It's very raw. Uh, I use the uh, social media platform Anchor for a lot of the recordings. OK. Um, and so I, I do it in a very raw, authentic way. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can you can hear, you know, cars driving by. If I'm recording in my car, you're going to hear cars driving by and semi truck that pulled up next to me and you know it's gonna feel like you're with me wherever my wherever my environment is it's gonna feel like you're with me in that environment and we're sitting down you know with a cup of coffee having a great conversation about you know some things that I'm very very passionate about so uh, that's my gift to to everybody on my birthday free podcast you know eat it up if you like it and if you don't you know let me know what I can do to make it better Absolutely. Well, definitely in the show notes, which you can find at bigbrotherray.com if you're watching this as a replay or as our podcast version of the show, we'll definitely have links to Tony's podcast. We encourage people to like, share, review, and uh, definitely support Tony in his journey in the podcast game. Uh, and uh, Tony, as I shared with you before we started taping, I had the honor and privilege with people like Arturo Nava and uh, Marcy Quintana and, and Brandy Butler and others. Uh, I actually it was part of a workshop at Hispanicize in Miami recently talking about the power of podcasting. And one of the interesting dynamics that came out of it was that it was an audience, roughly, I'd say, two thirds people that are primarily uh, bloggers. And then another third that are people that are primarily uh, uh, video is the primary platform, mostly YouTube, not so much as much live streaming, or maybe they started YouTube, now they're transitioning live streaming. And one of their questions, a lot of their, uh, a lot of their questions related to sort of the, alluded to sort of an and or scenario. And my point was, it's not about either or. It's not about Facebook Live or Periscope. It's not about two podcasts or YouTube, two videos or live stream. It's about, first of all, like you said, how do you how do you make yourself present where you need to be? But also, how do you uh, effectively redistribute, re repackage your same content in multiple formats? Sure. So as we're sitting here on Blab, which is another live streaming platform, right? Which in another conversation, we'll, we'll chat more about what's happening with Blab. But, yeah. the, you know, we're we're doing live streaming content, which you can see not only on Blab directly, but on my website, social media channels. Uh, you're you're going to I'm going to be able to use this video on YouTube and other uh, video platforms. This audio is going to be my podcast. Um, and and we're able to I mean, hypothetically, I could uh, transcribe it to be part of a blog. So sure. as, as people are thinking about. Um, these platforms, obviously they have nuances, but we have to be, we have to think about how do we effectively distribute our content in an effective and uh, multi-dimensional manner? I mean, and I've seen you do this many times, Tony, as we're sitting here, we could be on Periscope at the same time. We could be live streaming this on Facebook or other platforms at the same time. So it's important yeah. for people to look yeah. at that. And I think, um, as you were saying, Tony, you had, some, yeah. you had a comment? On Snapchat. I've snapped a couple of times throughout the interview. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and the uh, and the thing about podcasting, or people not familiar with it, and obviously I have a great passion for it. It it, it does give you uh, it does give you an opportunity to really focus on the story, and I think you just hit on something really critical. Whereas, as much as the story or the content is the essence of any platform, the reality is video. The visual is a big element of it, and and in things like Instagram and other platforms that are more visual and graphic focused that's a part of it but the podcast the essence of the story 
and uh, and and sharing of yourself in a very intimate way. There's nothing more intimate than being in someone's ears. Is uh, is very powerful. So Tony, uh, just a word, uh, anything you'd like to add about about how podcasting uh, is going to fit into your your platform and potentially others moving forward. Podcasting is something that I've had uh, an appreciation for and a passion for for a while. And if you and I were to sit down and go through my laptop, you'd see so many audio files that I've had just just recording things. And it, and it may be it may be like my wife and I going out to dinner and I was just like, well, yeah, I'm just going to record this because you never know. Something great may happen. Right. Sometimes something great happens. Sometimes something great doesn't happen. But I'm, I'm really into audio design and uh, I went to school for psychology. So I'm really interested in how, um, you know, people retain information and their their attention span. And, you know, if I have three minutes of a uh, clip right here where I'm just talking, I need to make sure that every 45 seconds, somewhere in the soundscape, the landscape of the sound, something changes. So I make sure I get your attention and maybe I tweak your interest over here a little bit and, and the way that it activates different parts of your brain. And so with podcasting, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited about building more so uh, around podcasting and not trying to integrate podcasting into what I'm doing now, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. So kind of like with the collection of stories that I'm using for uh, to sell a salesman, there are some stories that didn't make the cut for this edit, right? Because I don't want to keep it at, you know, 15 to 17 minutes. I don't really want to go past that. Uh, I want people to be able to consume multiple episodes in one day. So I kept it at 15 minutes You can get one in on the one or two in on the way to work and maybe one or two on the way back. So those stories can now formulate into uh, a Snapchat story, or those stories can formulate into uh, some content, the illustration that I use for content on Periscope or public speaking, right? And so um, I'm kind of transitioning to do more things around uh, live streaming and the podcasting world because those are the two things that I'm that I can I can get lost in and just completely geek out on, you know, whether the decibels are right and whether I should have this panned a little bit more to the right, and you know, does this does this you know, surround you like, you know, I, this is a semi passing me on the left, but I want to make sure that it sounds like when you're listening to it, it's passing you on the left. Right. And you're I want to make you feel like you're in the environment with me so I can, you know, that that's the the, the good and the evil of it. You know, the good it's good that I care that much. It's the, the evil part is I care that much. And so it's uh, it's almost like you got to <laughs> pry the pry the episode out of my hands. Like, OK, we got to get this one out. It's done. You got to put it out there. And so. Uh, it's 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 all a work in progress, but man, I uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a ton of fun. Absolutely, and uh, we'll definitely get in the show notes to promote uh, Tony R. Sanders' new podcast, his birthday gift to all of us, which is uh, very generous of you, Tony. And I look forward to to checking out these incredible stories. I'm sure you and I can uh, we could do a marathon for our favorite charities, just talking, sharing stories <laughs> about uh, the the stuff that we've done. We we love storytelling and. I mm-hmm. tell people that I uh, have, uh, they say, why, why do you love telling stories so much? I said, well, I think it comes, uh, well, there's lots of reasons, but for my grandfather, one of my grandfathers who uh, was a great storyteller, and, you know, I said, we have to realize 80, 90 years ago, he was li- growing up on a hill in Puerto Rico with outhouse and no electricity. There wasn't much to do up there, but talk a lot back right. in the day. So I think he passes on that tradition to me, and, and we just use it in a, in a in a different technological age, but the the power of that kind of collaboration and camaraderie is, is so amazing. Tony R. Sanders, you've been an incredible ray of light. And as we wrap up this uh, very education, I've got lots of notes. You've taught me so much about live streaming and uh, your personal philosophy around uh, providing value to people in your in your community. Let people again know any any final thoughts, any final shout outs, comments, uh, and uh, any final words from Tony R. Sanders on his birthday here on Race Talk Show. Uh, yeah, I guess just in closing, that's kind of the one thing that I love to close with uh, anytime I'm in front of a new crowd. I just want to encourage people, if you never see me or hear from me again, one thing that I want you to take away from this is just do stuff you love to do. Life is too short to do things that you hate, to do things that you uh, don't want to do. Do what you love to do, and it's possible for all of us, right? So we may have to start on a smaller scale. We may not be able to do the things on the scale that we wish that we could do them, right? So maybe you have to start out doing it part time or some of the time, right? You can't be a full entrepreneur yet, but you can be a, a you know, a, a half time entrepreneur, you know, part time entrepreneur, whatever you do, a sidepreneur, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you know, there's no excuse for you not to do the things that you love. And so 
uh, just do stuff that you love to do. Do stuff that you love to do. Um, that's you know, have fun, have fun with it. Do stuff that you love to do. That if I had a resume, that's that's all I want on my resume is that you know, creator of of dope things. He did he did what he loved to do. And so that's my that's my my final words. That's right. And uh, as Tony has said many times, you don't want to feel like you're constantly in the uh, in the uh, in the mofo stage, right? Like you know, missing out. You know, so right. so definitely. Uh, you know, they and you know, this is not a, a surprise, but you know, when they interview people in the latter stages of life and say, you know, what are your regrets and what do you? And it's always the same thing. It's like, oh, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. I wish I had gone for it. So, you know, life is too short, and it doesn't matter if you're. You know, you don't have to be. 15 to create an online brand. I mean, there's, it's never too late. It's never too late. You think it is. So Tony R. Sanders, you've been in a wonderful ray of light. I'm so happy we were able to, to make these arrangements. I want to thank Donna Gonzalez for uh, my booking producer to, to make these arrangements with you. And again, I didn't realize earlier today that this was your birthday. So you're being so incredibly generous with your time, Tony. Thank you so much. And uh, look forward to having you back on race talk show very soon, brother. Sounds good. Anytime. Well, thank you so much. And again, you've been listening to the the uh, Periscope live streaming morning show man, Tony R. Sanders from the Good Morning God Bless brand. Uh, definitely check out Tony R. Sanders on all his social media platforms. And again, thank you so much for watching and listening to Ray's talk show. You know, if you we just want to help people escape that cage uh, so they can find wealth in their voice through personal satisfaction, check us out at bigbrotheray.com. Download the show on iTunes. And uh, you can always email me at podcastrays at gmail.com that's podcast raise at gmail.com and uh we're here for you no question about it thank you tony and have a wonderful day so